Shut up and sit down. Well, hey, welcome back to the Patreon series where we talk about the 2020 National Electrical Code. We're working our way through Article 110. We're up to the last part. This is Part 6. Now, this is going to be a pretty brief one because we're going to focus on the tables we're dealing with enclosures in 110.28. And we're not dealing in this series with the over 1,000 volts at this stage of the game. Um, so again, if, if over a thousand volt is something you deal in, that will be added at a later date as part of a special addendum to this code series, because we're really focused on the applications that can benefit us the most. And that is the thousand volts and less applications. So that's where we're focusing on here. Um, but again, if you're interested in the over a thousand volt applications, that will come at a later date as an addendum to this training series. Okay. Without further ado, let's go on and get into the National Electrical Code and pick up where we left off and kind of round out this Article 110 uh, in today's episode. So here we're going to talk about uh, Table 110.28, but we're going to have to learn what 110.28 deals with up front. And so what is it dealing with? Well, it's talking about enclosures, and we're not talking about the fence enclosures or walls that enclose a space. Um, we're talking about enclosures that enclose things like switch gears, switch boards, panel boards, uh, industrial control panels, the, the, the enclosures, the metal enclosures that are around uh, motor control centers and meter sockets and, and switches and transfer switches. You get the idea. Circuit breakers that are inside of enclosures, uh, all those type of things. Uh, we're talking about specific ratings. And when we say the ratings is basically what is the enclosure itself rated for? In other words, a typical panel that me and you would have in our house is going to be what's called a NEMA 1. And it's rated for incidental contact with enclosed equipment. In other words, it's going to have a dead front on it and everything so that I can't just poke my finger in there and get metal and a lot of parts and all. So it, it, it really designed that way. No big openings on it. Okay. Of course, you can remove the cover and get to what you need to do to work on it. But generally, at the end of the day, once it's completed and put in place, it's not so easy for little Susie or little Johnny to come along and start sticking stuff in there or make incidental contact with the live parts inside this enclosure, right? So at the end of the day, that's inherent on all of these enclosures. But then you have varying degrees of ratings that these enclosures are evaluated for. Now, where are they evaluated for that? Uh, typically, these are NEMA ratings, so it is not done by NEMA. NEMA doesn't do any testing at all. NEMA sets the criteria, and then the manufacturer, if they want to utilize that rating, they have to do their products and test their products to conform to the NEMA standard. Okay, If they want to call it a NEMA 3, if they want to call it a NEMA 3R, which is recognizable, NEMA has a published document called the NEMA 250 document for enclosures, uh, which gives a lot of the reference and guide points for the manufacturer to follow. So most of the manufacturers, if they want to create a NEMA 3R enclosure, for example, then they would get a hold of the NEMA 250 document and they would follow the tests that are necessary. And if they pass those tests, it's pretty much self-evaluation on that part. Then they can get the NEMA rating on it. Now, of course, the enclosure itself... Um, would get its own evaluation for whatever it's being used for. But if it wants some type of NEMA rating, okay, then it has to meet that classification. And again, they're going to do all the tests that are necessary to show that it meets this. NEMA doesn't test anything by themselves, okay? Now, as it says here, again, we're talking about that enclosure. And it also reminds us that 110.28, and again, we're right here if you're following along, it says, shall be used for selecting these enclosures uh, for use in the specific locations other than hazardous classified locations, okay? So again, the selection here is not for hazardous classified locations, all right? It has its own rules. It has its own requirements. It has its own selection for that. Here, we're talking about other than that type of application, all right? Now, 
The enclosures are not intended to protect against conditions such as condensation, icing, corrosion, or contamination that may occur from within the enclosure, okay? Via raceways or maybe some unsealed openings, okay? It's not what this is about. This is about the ability to protect it from exterior atmospheric conditions, all right? Not what could happen inside. Okay, you're still responsible for sealing and, and all the other stuff that the code requires, but that's not what the enclosures are rated for. It's rated for, usually it's ingress of things from an exterior point, okay? That's the things that these are kind of geared towards. So let's kind of look at the table. Well, obviously, we're going to start first with the outdoor locations. So as you can see down on the left, these are all potential conditions uh, that an enclosure can be placed in outside. Uh, it could be used in a prolonged submersion. It could be just temporary submersion. It could be being utilized in a corrosive environment. Maybe it's an enclosure that's going to be subject to spray down or hose pressure, okay, that would push that water into these openings. Um, if it's windblown dust or sleet that may in, in, uh, impede the operation of, say, a disconnect, or if it's just rain, snow, and sleet on enclosures that have no moving parts on the outside, okay? Again, so as you see here on the right, we have an enclosure list. And each one of these will correspond below the acceptable use under that NEMA classification. So typically, and these are outdoors, using this example. So 3R is probably one that we're all very familiar with, NEMA 3R. And enclosure, say it's a panel board uh, that's inside of an enclosure outside, and it is rated 3R. Okay, so it is okay for incidental, incidental contact right here means that, you know, nobody can poke things. It's not going to have any openings to poke stuff in it once it's completed. Okay. Uh, but it's also okay for rain, snow, and sleet. Perfectly fine. Not a big issue. Now, interesting enough, it stops there. And, again, so that would be most all outside applications. going to be fine. Um, snow, sleet, not a problem. Now, if it has some element that has to still be mechanically operated, and it gets sleeted up, then it's going to kick it into this one. And that's what that little asterisk does. It reminds us at the bottom that if there's a mechanical component that's got to be maneuvered or moved or operated like a disconnect, and its sleet is, a, is something that could take place, then it has to be able to still be able to mechanically move. And that's what that is. And that will kick you into out of a 3R into a S, uh, 3S. Okay. So that kind of throws it into that next category. So that's kind of how you use this this table chart here. Um, again, if you need something that's uh, windblown dust, okay, well, then that's going to fall under this one. A 3 would work. A 3S would work. A 3X would work. Notice a 3R will not work. Um, and again, you've got a 3SX, uh, 4, 4X, 6, and 6P. Well, they're going to be fine for that. Well, what about if I'm going to put an enclosure in an area which is subject to hose down? I mean, pressurized water spraying on it. Okay, well, as you see here, a normal NEMA 3R is not going to work. Okay, outside under rain, it's fine. But anywhere it would get pressure blown on it with water, it's not going to work, right? So in this case, it pushes you into a 4, 4X, 6, or 6P. And that's the rating that will be on the enclosure itself. Again, really, this depends on your condition of use, what you're doing with that enclosure, where you're putting it, okay? Uh, the next thing would be corrosive agents. Again, you see that 3X, 3RX, 3SX, 4X, and 6P, because again, 6P is prolonged submersion. Um, all of those are perfectly fine under a corrosive agent condition. And of course, lastly, of the outdoor ones, we have temporary submersion and then prolonged submersion. All right, so if you have an application where on a regular basis uh, an enclosure is going to be submerged, then it's only temporary then you would use that, and that's going to be a six. However, if you have a prolonged submersion, uh, and again, defined time of prolong is really going to be something you're going to have to work out with your jurisdiction. But if there's a prolong, I like to say temporary, we're pretty clear uh, on its application. It's just temporary basis. Uh, prolonged can mean we don't know how long it could be submerged. Okay. Uh, if all else fails, worst comes to worst, 6P is going to be greater than the six rating go with the 6P. But again, it really has to determine that exposure in what you use. I can't make that judgment for you. All right, now, what about indoor locations? 
Well, you see here we have indoor locations. Again, the same. We have the type 1, incidentally. Uh, type 1 is the same one that would be for a panel in your house. It's a dry location, all right? And it can handle any falling dirt. That's, that's not going to be an issue. But that's where it stops for those type 1s. Of course, you've got type 2, 4, 4X, 5, 6, 6Ps, 12, 12K, 13. Again, varying degrees of acceptance with those enclosures, right? All right, so as you can move it down, again, this could be an enclosure for a transformer as well. And it might have a situation where it needs to be a certain rating uh, because it might be subject to oil and coolant seepage or oil and coolant spray and splashing, depending on what it's used for. Maybe it's a motor in an application with an enclosure around it, okay? Or it's in an area where that could be a condition of use in that area. Then you're going to select the type of enclosure that is best suited for that atmospheric condition, uh, maybe outside where it's, again, um, well, this is inside, so I guess not atmospheric condition. I guess maybe, uh, let's say it's in a cannery and somebody is doing spray down or, or hose down or something like that, okay, then that would be here, hose down and splash water, and that means it's got to be a 4 or 4X or 6 or 6P, and that's indoor, okay? This is an indoor use application, all right? Um, and again, there was that asterisk that was talking about for the, the uh, sleet, and it still has to be able to, the mechanism shall be able to operable when it's iced over. Uh, now, informational note number one is really, really, really good because, yes, it's an informational note, but it kind of ties these things together because routinely your situations are going to be you need a rain tight or you need something that's rain proof uh, or you need something that is watertight or you need something that is drip tight. Uh, or you need something that is dust tight. So what this does is uses all of those references and combines them with the enclosures that typically would meet that specific definition of for use. So rain tight, that tells me I can use uh, type 3, type 3S, 3SX, 3X, 4, 4X, 6, and 6P. I can use those for rain tight. Okay, and we have definitions in 100 for a lot of these here. So uh, rain proof. It tells me typically I can use a 3R, a 3RX. For water tight, it says typically is in conjunction with a 4, 4X, 6, and 6P. And then, of course, dust uh, drip tight okay, is type 2, 5, 12, 12K, and 13. And then, of course, dust tight tells me typically it's 3, 3S, 3SX, 3X, 4, 4X, 5, 6, 6P, 12, 12K, 13. The interesting thing is, you could do this yourself by simply looking at the table based on your condition. Whether or not we're looking for something that's dust tight, okay, then we follow all the ones that, that covers it under dust tight. Obviously, that says, for example, three is okay. Well, here's three right here. And, of course, dust, windblown dust. And three says it's okay. So, I mean, you could literally do it, but why would you want to? You have an informational note. Again, not enforceable, but typically these enclosures, if you read the NEMA Enclosure 250 document and all of the explanation of how they're tested are going to be acceptable for these types of terms and conditions, okay? And now, you also have an informational note that mentions about uh, the uh, ingress protection, IP rating. You might see a NEMA rating. And you might see an IP rating. Like I say, it might be IP 63 or whatever it might be. Okay. Uh, that IP is IEC. That's used internationally. It's based on the degrees of protection provided by enclosures. The IP rating is not a substitute for the enclosure type rating. So if you're using the National Electrical Code and you got a box that has an IP rating, you better make sure what the actual rating is when it comes to a NEMA rating because you cannot use an IP rating as a substitute for the required enclosure ratings that we see here in Table 110.28, okay? And again, uh, it'd probably be nice if it made a reference to the NEMA document, but NEMA has a really good document. It's called the Enclosure 250 document, and it explains all of these ratings as well. But they're also available online for you to be able to, to go online and, and find other, other uh, references for those NEMA-rated uh, enclosures as well. Okay? So, all right. So, 
hey, what did we say here? We said this won't be a short one, and it is. So you should have a, a really good understanding now of, of the enclosures. And it's just a matter of taking whatever the condition of use is and picking the proper enclosure based on that condition of use. Once you do that, then it's going to be easier for you to understand how that enclosure can have a survivability rate in that condition. Okay, so hopefully you got something out of today's episode. We'll see you as we start to move on and we're going to get out of this 110 and we're going to start moving forward into Article 200. Till next time, stay safe. Shut up and sit down.